Now, every other central bank every other, and first tier bullion bank, for that matter, is long gold for their own books and are continuing to buy gold into every single dip. Now, we've evidenced the Fed agent banks largely populated by the swap dealers, the, as we call them, the commercials. We've evidenced them short covering at the top of the current range. Now, obviously, short term volatility aside, this is a huge change in behavior. And it is a clear sign that the Fed is beginning to capitulate. And it leads us into what to expect as we head into the fourth quarter and why. After we pop in to look at the charts a bit later, I'll provide the rationale for the expectations of a Russian-driven $3,500 gold price forecast. Few experts are as influential in the intricate world of precious metals as Andrew McGuire, renowned for his sharp insights into the dynamics of the gold and silver markets. McGuire emphasizes that the historical mechanisms that facilitated synthetic gold price suppression over the past 50 years are encountering significant resistance. This event is not merely an isolated incident. It reflects a broader trend in gold's lasting allure for investors. Gold prices have appreciated significantly over the last 50 years, driven by a complex interplay of supply and demand. Key players in this landscape, such as large ETFs and central banks, have their actions closely influencing market movements. McGuire notes that the failed suppression attempt in February resulted in an impressive $600 per ounce rally, fueled by shortages driven by central bank purchases. He observes that nearly every central and first-tier bullion bank is now actively buying gold on price dips, a stark departure from previous market behaviors. This shift in central bank strategy is particularly noteworthy, aligning with recent data on gold purchases. Although central bank buying saw a 39% quarter-over-quarter decline in Q2, totaling 183 tons, this figure remains 3% above the five-year quarterly average of 179 tons. Despite the recent slowdown, this indicates a sustained positive demand trend in the sector. While the focus has shifted towards demand-side factors, especially central bank buying, it is also crucial to consider supply dynamics. Gold supply continues to be primarily driven by mining production, creating a delicate balance that significantly influences price movements. Before we dive into this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. One by one, all of the historical drivers which basically had enabled the synthetic gold price suppression uh, game for, for, the, well, for the entire tenure of the last 50 years, obviously COMEX market-centric uh, history, um, have systematically run into the identified central bank physical buy levels that we've identified along the way. And this, this was really kind of where we drew major attention to it, was after the Fed's massive miscalculation in mid-February we looked at it in the charts. We'll look at it a little bit again in a little while, but which is when they tried to chart paint gold through $2,000 into very strong Asian physical buying. And that blew back, commencing really, that was where we saw the commencement of a, a over $600 per ounce rally into central bank driven physical shortages, uh, forcing the Fed to begin folding its spoof hand. Now, every other central bank every other, and first tier bullion bank, for that matter, is long gold for their own books and are continuing to buy gold into every single dip. Now, we've evidenced the Fed agent banks largely populated by the swap dealers, the, as we call them, the commercials. We've evidenced them short covering at the top of the current range. Now, obviously, short term volatility aside, this is a huge change in behavior and it is a clear sign that the Fed is beginning to capitulate. And it leads us into what to expect as we head into the fourth quarter and why. After we pop in to look at the charts a bit later, I'll provide the rationale for the expectations of a Russian-driven $3,500 gold price forecast. Now, the reason we're able to withstand all of the official wash and rinse cycles attempts, which have been Really, we've been tracking them, have they sucked in the speculators, gaslighted them into thinking gold was a good short uh, at each of the stair step supports, especially every time we hit a round number, whether it's 2200, 20, 2300, 20, 2400, even the half numbers like 2550 and, and so on. And the reason is because we're able to actually weigh up the synthetic market footprints against where we see these paper bets clash into enough central bank 
physical support levels that force these 96% leveraged synthetic bets to actually get unwound. And this, this kind of frees up this frees us up to focus on the larger picture. And it is these underpinning physical market drivers that really pushed back against the Fed's ongoing synthetic efforts to cap the price of gold against really a rapidly debasing dollar. And it's quite simple, really. And as these physical markets are increasingly being settled outside the Fed's reach, the scope of these synthetic driven sell-offs are governed by how many of these 96% leverage bets can be cash settled against the speculators inside the Comex pub bubble before it flows out of the casino into the real world. And this gold price suppression scheme has really been figured out by the competing central banks swapping their debasing dollars for gold. Each unbacked paper market dip has dug a deeper hole for the Fed to actually clamber out of. Andrew McGuire has shed light on Russia's recent financial maneuvers, which have significant implications for the global gold market. According to McGuire, Russia's international reserves have experienced a remarkable surge, reaching an impressive $69 billion in August. The Central Bank of Russia's official figures support McGuire's observations. As of August 20, 24, Russia's foreign exchange reserves have climbed to a staggering $613.715 billion, representing a significant jump from July's figure of $602.05 billion. This latest data point is not an anomaly, but rather part of a long-term upward trend in Russia's reserves. Additionally, Russia's financial strategy extends beyond merely accumulating reserves. In an interesting parallel development, the country is actively working to reduce its foreign debt. The central bank reports a 3.4% year-over-year decline in Russia's foreign debt, which stood at $306.1 billion as of July 1st. Let's get back to the interview. So really, following Russia, Russia international reserves riding, rising to, uh, it was $609 billion in August. Uh, that was largely derived from excess oil revenues. A decision was made by the Russian Central Bank to increase gold purchases. And if you recall, around the 15th of August, we noted the unusually high gold demand and premiums coming out of Russia with a well-connected Russian-facing liquidity provider remarking uh, that this likely related to the plan to increase central bank reserves ahead of the BRICS-Kazan summit next month. Now, these premiums have continued, and we have fresh evidence Russia is trading gold for goods. Now, all the pieces of the puzzle are assembling, some of them as yet unreported. Now, one of the clues as to where the Russian central bank expects gold prices to settle uh, around or shortly after the BRICS currency launch came from our contact at Serdar, who let, and I'll, 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 I'll provide a link to this, um, <clears throat> who let out of the bag um, before anything was published, that based upon the cross rates between central bank rate of 21% and the huge rise in leasing demand, which pays 5.5%, a 5% coupon on their gold bonds, the price should be 10,000 rubles per gram, which as of today, equates to $3,516 per ounce. Now, the expected US dollar price for gold has since been made public, uh, and it was published by TASS during the September 3rd holiday, and it's gone unreported. The next piece of the puzzle follows followed the next day on the 4th of September, with the official report that Russian gold output had increased by 5.9% in the first half of 2024, with almost all the production being absorbed, absorbed by the domestic market. However, the Russian central bank is now allocating 1.9 billion for purchases of gold from September the 6th to October the 4th. Now, domestic supply will tighten, prompting major producer Saledar to expect prices to rise over the next six months. Now we have the Sino-Russia price target, which is why we're evidencing such strong Asian-facing physical demand, with the AM fixes taking advantage of every Fed-driven official gold intervention. As was being relayed from our liquidity providers through its proxies, Russia was the reported large buyer. Notably, into the COMEX-driven sell-offs, ruble-denominated gold proportionately rose in price or has been rising in price into dips. Now, our liquidity providers also now tell us a large gold for oil deal has recommenced, enabling some of the massive 400 ounce monetary gold demand we've been tra tracking exiting the UK and Switzerland 
to be directly exchanged, through proxies of course, for Russian oil. In fact, at best estimate, real Russian gold reserves likely stand at around an unreported total of about 20,000 tonnes. This is essentially puts the BRICS nation's combined gold reserves at around 80,000 tonnes that we previously assessed that, and which is basically 40,000 uh, PBOC, 25,000 available in times of citizens uh, of, of crisis for, in citizens' gold that could be uh, could be uh, capitalized on, and 20,000 Russian and fellow countries, which is Saudi, etc., BRICS gold reserves. Now, Polyus also remarks on the unprecedented demand for gold driving ever higher prices, and according to their CEO, Vostolkov, representatives of the gold industry sees gold interests not only to central banks, but also to Asian investors. I think I just printed out what he said here, which is, Quote, there is a great demand from Chinese investors, retail investors who are starting to shift from real estate to the local stock market to gold. Experts also see demand from Western investors, including American ones, who have begun to actively buy gold. He said, noting that there is also demand from exchange traded ETF tied to gold. Interesting. Gold remains a cornerstone asset in global finance valued for its ability to retain value and act as a hedge against inflation and economic instability. As central banks increase their gold purchases, particularly in emerging markets, the demand for this precious metal remains robust. In times of geopolitical uncertainty, gold's allure grows even stronger, making it a sought-after investment for institutions and individual investors. What are your thoughts on gold and its role in today's market? We'd love to hear your opinions, so share your insights in the comments below. If you found this video insightful and valuable, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more updates on market trends and investment strategies. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care and happy investing.